Hey guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter, and today we're going to do a monitor review, but not a normal one. BenQ recently asked if I wanted to check out one of their new 32-inch monitors, but instead of doing this typical, here's the ports, blah, 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 I figured I'd kind of mix it up. Instead of just talking about the monitor, we would also take a look at my desk setup and how I use monitors uh, for video production, live streaming, even a little bit of gaming. So without further ado, let's go ahead and head over to my office and we'll jump right in. So this is my current desk. There's a few things you should know before we jump into specifics. First and foremost, life is way too short for cable management. Secondly, you'll notice everything is really dark here. As much as I love bright spaces, I always prefer editing videos in a darker environment. It really does help with color correcting and grading videos, and it also helps hide my serious cable management problem. Thirdly, this desk is used for way more than just editing videos. This is where I write scripts, do research for videos, where I import, edit, publish, and share my content. It's where I occasionally do some gaming when I can find the time. And finally, it's also where I film live streams and some of my videos as well as record voiceovers. So let's jump into how I use this desk and the different components it's composed of. Currently, I'm using and loving this dual monitor setup. One of the monitors is off to the right and is perfectly calibrated for grading videos. The way I have things set up is I have Final Cut 10 display the image on this monitor. And after using this kind of Setup, I don't think I could go back to a single monitor configuration. It's really awesome to have your project displayed at full 4K on a separate display that's perfectly calibrated. And when I'm not editing, I use it for notes and extra screen real estate, depending on the task at hand. My center monitor is the BenQ EW3270U, which is a 32 inch 4K HDR monitor with a few features I've really loved since using it. First, this thing is huge. Coming from using a single 27 inch monitor i love the larger size for editing and gaming is fantastic on this beast and i've always preferred the 16 by 9 aspect ratio for work ultra wides are great for gaming and movies but that loss of vertical space really sucks for complex timelines i also like not needing to look too far to the left or right and just overall after trying ultra wides i really do prefer 16 by 9 standard aspect ratio monitors this monitor also also has a feature that I've been using a ton here in the studio called Brightness Intelligence Plus. In short, when this mode is on, the monitor automatically dims or brightens depending on the lighting in your room. There's a tiny sensor just below the monitor that will read the room ambient light and adjust the brightness accordingly. It sounds really gimmicky, but it's actually amazing. When I'm writing in a text document or just browsing the web, which is a huge percentage of my job, believe it or not, this mode keeps those white pages from killing my eyes and keeps those nasty headaches away. I also turn this mode on when I do my live streams as my lighting setup makes seeing my screen pretty difficult. With this mode, it'll brighten up the screen and I can still read comments and whatnot while on the stream. When it's time to edit, I just tap the HDR BI button on the lower right of the display to turn this feature off and now I'm back to a calibrated setup. Speaking of that button and HDR, this monitor is advertised as an HDR monitor, but for video production applications, it really isn't bright enough. So this HDR mode is more of an emulation and I wouldn't recommend it for editing videos. Gaming with this mode on the other hand is pretty sweet. So I've been very happy with this monitor in all but a few few areas. The stand it comes with isn't very good, but I use Visa mounts for all of my monitors, so this isn't a big deal for my use case. The color accuracy is very good at 95% DCI P3 coverage, but viewing angles are pretty poor and you'll notice a lack of contrast when you're not centered in front of the screen. All in all, this is a great monitor for those looking for a large 4K display that'll help save your eyes. If you're only going to have one monitor for video production, I might recommend a different monitor in the BenQ line up as this monitor is good but not up to my standards as someone who creates videos and edits them full time. Moving on to audio, to the left of my monitors I have a Pro FX8 V2 mixer which is mounted vertically. I cannot understate how amazing this orientation has been. When live streaming I used to find myself constantly moving over to look at the mixer and by setting things up like this I can easily find and change levels without moving at all. To accomplish this I simply used a guitar stand 
I had laying around. It's a small upgrade, but it makes a huge difference to your setup. For headphones, I'm using the modest Sony MDR 7506s, which I mount underneath the desk. And for speakers, I have a pair of MS40s from Behringer, which aren't in the correct position and not incredibly nice, but for casual listening and editing, they're just fine. When I'm mixing sound for a video, I usually switch over to my MDRs for more critical listening anyway. Now on to video gear. Right above my main display, I have a camera and a lighting setup that has been so, so good to me. The whole setup is composed and mounted on a C-stand right behind the desk. You could use a wall mount or a cheaper, smaller light stand, but this sturdy stand allows me to mount anything without worrying about weight. For example, I recently used a massive softbox for a two-person live stream the other week and had no problems mounting a heavy light in this huge thing on the C-stand. The camera mount is simply composed of a nano clamp with a friction arm and a ball mount quick release on the end. This lets me easily position and add and remove different cameras depending on the setup I'm going for. For the light, I'm using the Falcon Eyes 12T. This little LED mat is easily in my top five most used lights here in the studio and is perfect for live streaming. I keep the controller on my desk, which makes for easy output control and turning the light on and off. Now to get the signal from my camera into my computer over HDMI, I use this AVIO 4K adapter. There are much cheaper options out there, but of the three adapters I've tried, this is the only one that's worked 100% of the time. My microphone setup is very, very simple. I have a cheapo newer mic arm, which is around $13, I believe, and I use a shotgun microphone with a pop filter. This microphone is the NTG4, but I wouldn't buy this for live streaming if I were you. I just have mine lying around and put it to work here at the desk. A lot of people ask why I use a shotgun microphone at my desk instead of a traditional large diaphragm, and here's the reason behind that. There's really two different reasons I use a shotgun microphone here at the desk. Number one is if I'm doing a live stream or a voiceover like you've been hearing through this whole video, uh, I can have it really close to my mouth with a pop filter and it's going to get the best possible quality since I'm right up against the microphone. Uh, but if I want to shoot a video and I don't want to see this microphone in the shot here, I can go ahead and simply remove this pop filter here. And I will be doing a video on this pop filter setup because so many of you have asked about it. At any rate, now I can hide the microphone and uh, we can get a nice clean shot like this. The microphone is now hidden just out of the frame. That way I can record a video here without you seeing the microphone. I'll pull it back up just to show that it's down there. And yeah, gives me two different options using the same microphone and a shotgun is gonna be able to have that reach to catch my voice while out of the frame. And finally, for importing SD cards, I have three Transcend readers under my desk. People think I'm crazy for having three card readers, but I love being able to dump a ton of footage from multiple cameras and audio recorders at the same time while I'm making some coffee, for instance. And last but hardly least, I have a giant white mouse pad that first and foremost looks super dope, but also works great as a fill for my lighting setup here at the desk. I have a super cheap mechanical keyboard with cherry blue switches because I like those clicks and a Logitech 502 gaming mouse. This mouse helps me frag better when gaming and edit faster when I'm working. And I'll be talking about this mouse more in the future because it's crazy awesome. For the desk itself, I'm using an electronic Ikea sit stand or stand sit desk, and it works really, really well. To the left of my desk are all the non-sexy things like my computer, project drives, backup drives, backup power supply, and a printer and scanner. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I just wasn't feeling up to a typical read the spec sheet monitor review. Uh, so let me guys know what you thought of this. If you like this kind of format, I'm um, probably gonna take a break from monitor reviews for a little while and get back to some fresh new stuff. So if you wanna learn more about the uh, BenQ monitor, you can check out the link in the description. All that aside, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.